Hey y'all, so today's video is going to be all about shader graph. I did a video a week or two back and a lot of folks were asking about more introductory level kind of explanations of what I was doing. So this is that video. Uh, I'm going to jump in, explain what shader graph is, look at some documentation, open it up, create a very basic shader and just start to explain the value that you can extract from the tool. So first thing I need to do is stick with Unity 6. So I'm going to be opening a new HDRP core project in 6037F1, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Project. While that's creating in the background, I just wanted to point out that the documentation on this, while perhaps not the most intuitive as far as browsing for tutorials and whatnot, is great at explaining what each node is and does. So if you want to get in here and say, hey, I, I'm confused about the property type of a vector for and how to use it, you can actually start to get in and understand what each of these things are, how the textures work. And even more importantly, in the node library, if you say, hey, I've always wanted to understand better what a blend node does, you can then get in here and find that specific node and see what type of inputs it is taking, outputs, etc. And it even shows you some generated code samples as well. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm gonna jump over into the project and we're gonna go ahead and open up Shader Graph. All right, so now that we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and close the HDRP wizard. I'm gonna to go to File, New Scene, and open up a basic indoors HDRP scene. Awesome, now that we're in here, we can kind of get around, see our scene. So one of the things to better understand what's happening inside of a shader graph is to go ahead and go to create shader graph. And then if you go into HDRP, you can actually make just a standard lit HDRP shader. And let's say this is the example. So now that I've created this example shader graph, I'm going to double click on it, or you can open shader editor up here in the inspector. So I'm just gonna double click and now that we're in here, we see a few different things immediately pulled up, and each of these is critically important to your success in using this tool. The first one are the nodes themselves. So you have a vertex portion, which is typically all about the vertices and the actual um, the pieces of 3D geometry in space and how they're going to be implemented and or manipulated. So, for example, in the tutorial I did a few weeks back about how to animate procedurally flapping wings in that I was animating the position of the vertices through a sine wave going up and down. The fragment is more about what you're visually going to see as far as what you would typically think of as a shader or a material. So in here inside of a an HDRP lit material you have base color, normal, metallic, emission, smoothness, etc. And all of these things are important. However, much of them are just dead weight whenever you're trying to implement a shader that does one very specific thing because I don't necessarily need it to have a metallic value or understand what ambient occlusion is. So the value in creating your own shader is going to be that you're much more efficient with how much your computer is currently looking at at one point in time. Um, the example that we'll do today is going to be maybe like a, a simple police light, like just going from blue to red over and over again. And in that sense, we don't need normals, we don't need metallic, we don't need smoothness, etc. So we're going to be able to pull a lot of this out. So there's our example. The left side over here is called the blackboard, and that's for any variables, especially ones that you want to expose. So you're, you might be thinking, okay, what are variables within the sense of a shader graph? Isn't this to input textures and other things? So it does implement textures, but it also implements math, arithmetic, etc. And you can actually do a lot of very complex things from within here. So what I'm going to do today is, for example, put a public variable here or public attribute that you can, from the inspector of this shader, actually change the speed that the red and blue are flashing as well as the brightness of the emission. So that's where we would create something like that. So let's say we want to do speed, etc. This then drags out just like you would in a VFX graph or something similar. And then you can start to create that logic. One of the last things here is the graph inspector. So this has node settings based on the node that you currently have selected. And it also has graph settings. So your overall like build target, etc. What type of material are we basing this on? 
Lastly, we have our preview window down here. So as I start to build out a material or a shader rather, you can start to see what that's going to look like in the preview window. Um, I tend to just get back over and hit play and check everything out in scene, but it is nice to have that preview window if you need it. Okay, so there's our example. Looking at our scene, what I wanna do is really to create this police light aesthetic. I'm going to create shader graph, and then I don't really want to build out a full HDRP shader. Instead, I just want a blank shader graph. And we're gonna call this light. So I'm gonna double click that, and you're gonna notice immediately that this thing is pink in the bottom right. And luckily, we already have in our graph inspector pulled up the reason why, which is that there is no active target. So because we're in an HDRP scene, I'm gonna go ahead and do the drop down, click HDRP, and now we can see this nice uh, preview right here that we can look at. So if I were to change this to red, you can start to see what that's gonna look like over here. Fantastic. All right, so now that we're in here, I can start to edit things that I don't really care about. So the vertex nodes, we're going to just leave all of these stuff inside of that node as it is because we don't really want to delete the normal, the position or the tangent within object space of this shader. What I do want to take out are a few things like alpha, we have no need for, bent normal, no need, smoothness, no need, ambient occlusion, we're good. Take out the normal and even the metallic too. So at this point, this is a much more efficient shader than what I just had. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save so that we have it saved out. And then let's start to look at what this is gonna be. So if we're doing a police light, first thing I wanna do is create two color nodes. So I'm just gonna grab a color node here. And all that I'm doing is right clicking, hitting create node, and then typing in what I wanna get and making nodes here and here. And what I could even do if I wanted to would be to create a, a public color. So if I want to, I could come over here and create this. And let's say this is light color one and pull this out here. And then this in its default value could be red. And then I could do a light color too. And I can make this a blue. And now I can just delete these colors built into the shader graph itself. Does that make sense? So I'm creating a public variable that now I can control from the inspector instead of driving it from within the graph. So now that I have that, I can come over here and say, I want red and blue to blend. And now that we're in the blend, I wanna do a blend where this is one of the two colors and I'm just going to associate that with the top color instead and this with the bottom color so that we have red on top, blue on bottom. So now what I wanna do is drive the opacity. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a sine wave way out here. And then let's say the output of this sine wave, I want to drive the opacity and the input of this sine wave is that I want it to have time. So now time is driving our sine and that sign is then driving our opacity. So now that I have that, I wanna change the mode to overwrite because I'm not just wanting to do one of these modifiers like you'd see in Photoshop. I wanna actually overwrite the color. And now we're moving between red and blue with this sine wave. So what you're probably thinking is, oh, that's way too slow for police light. Yeah, you're completely right. So let's go ahead and move this over here. And now I'm going to create a multiply node with the time node. And now I can take my time and I can take the time into A of the multiply node, take the out into the sign, and then have this come out into a new attribute that we're going to create, which will just be a float, let's say. So this will be speed of light. And now this one I can just pull right up here and have that go straight into the B channel. So now that I have that, 
I can come over and change the default value from zero, which is currently basically shut off the sign to let's say 20. Now we're starting to see a bit closer to what we would expect. I'm gonna take it to 10 for now, just so it's not too, too jarring. And then this is basically ready to take out into the base color. So now that I've taken it into the base color and I've hit save, I can also come out here and do an emission node. In this emission node, I want to have the color go into the beginning and then I can have the output go into emission and I want the intensity to be something that I can also manually change. So I'm gonna come up here and do another float. Let's say intensity of emission. Now I can pull this down here and slap that right in. And now this might be a bit more intense. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and come over into my scene where I can do a 3D object sphere Pull this right up over here. And let's say I want to create a new material to put this on. So I'm going to go to create material. We'll call this light. And I'm going to put that material onto my sphere from within here. Now I can go to the shader itself and I can go into shader graphs and I can do my light. Now you're going to see that it's red by default because the way that all of this runs within shader graph is that it really doesn't run until you hit play or until you have it in that preview window that we looked at earlier. So once I hit play, then we're going to see it going between red and blue. And one of the coolest things is when I select this and I come down, you're going to be able to see in the exposed properties all of the items that I previously exposed. So I'm just going to make myself a bit smaller here. So I now have two different colors. So if I hit play, So it's definitely not going fast enough. So I want it to move faster. So let's say I could come over in here and go to speed of light and take that to 50. That's too much. <laughs> That's probably about right. So I'm just going to say 25 for now. And then uh, intensity of emission I have set to 25. So if we set that to one, that's what it would look like. Set it back up to 25. That's looking pretty damn good. And now the only thing that really we're looking at, oh my gosh, that's fun, just to get in here and change some of the colors around. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll stop playing around. I can't really help it. Okay, let me hit stop. And then let's look at one of the last things that we see in here that we really want to change. So let me go ahead and set that back to red. I'll set this back to blue. And then I notice in the reflection probe here that this is still showing green, right? So this is not necessarily a shader graph thing, but it's more a lighting thing. And that is that within my lighting, I have a reflection probe. And within this reflection probe, I have it on real time, but it only updates on enable, meaning when the scene first starts. So I'm not saying that this is what you want to do in your scene, but uh, because it is an expensive operation, but I'm just gonna set this to every frame so that it will actually recompute and actually show the updating shader inside of the metallic here. And then let's go ahead and hit play. And now we can see that this is doing just about what I want. And I can move this around in here. And again, you can see that the shader is not necessarily updated in the scene view. All right, so we have all of this working. Let me come back out into my light material. Take the speed maybe down to 20. Intensity of emission. I'm pretty happy with 25. Yeah, I think that's far too much. Um, and then what we could do is even go into the volume profile and start to tweak some things here. So I could pull the intensity of the bloom up and start to see what kind of effect that makes here. And you could keep playing around with settings like that until you get the look that you're trying to go for. I'm pretty happy with this. It's a very basic shader. So now that we have this all done, let's just do a quick recap. So within our node network, we have the vertex, which we didn't really touch, the fragment, which we kind of culled out then we have, from the left, a time node multiplied by an externally facing variable, the speed of light. 
that is then driving a sine node that's going between 0 and 1, up and down, that we're using to then modulate our opacity between two colors that are also externally facing, that our end user can customize in the inspector. We then plug that straight into base color, and then separately we're plugging that into the emission node, where we're then multiplying that times an intensity that again is an externally facing float, and then outputting that into the emission channel. So hopefully in looking at this game object, you feel that this is as successful as I do. I'm quite a fan of it. And you can see how some of that bloom really just brings this to life quickly in a scene. And we get all of the cost savings of not having to implement this as an animated timeline object that is turning on and off different pieces of real-time light. So I hope that this was helpful and this answered a few questions and gets you up and going with Shader Graph. I hope y'all are having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.